In this video, we are going to take a look at this incredible Inarche 86, a long range steel hull trawler yacht that is not only currently for sale, but is also currently available for charter. So please sit back, relax and get yourself comfortable as we get access to all areas aboard this intriguing explorer yacht. I recently flew to Spain to see this time-honoured, almost legendary boat that has taken the owner and his family vast distances since they purchased the vessel. Upon discovering that she was available for purchase, I was compelled to embark on a video assignment enabling me to showcase this remarkable vessel to you, my value subscribers, in all her splendour and detail. Just quickly, please don't forget to give the video a like because it means that more people will get to see it. And also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate every single one of you who hits that subscribe button. Starting with the stern of Belize, we find a large swim platform which can be reached through a very practical built-in staircase on the port side. This modification was part of the refit done in 2009. As well as being refit in 2009, she also went through another refit in 2020. Belize has a new passerelle with new controls on her starboard side. Moving on, we'll explore the vessel's expansive covered aft main deck, featuring a fixed table and cozy seating arrangements. This inviting space is perfect for savouring open air dining experiences and unwinding in pure relaxation. Up to nine guests can gather around the table, relishing in the camaraderie and delight of shared meals and memorable conversations. The main deck also features teak flooring and sunshade, offering a comfortable and inviting space for guests to enjoy while on board. The wide side decks on this boat are well designed with full teak decking and high bulwarks on both the upper and main decks. The high bulwarks offer protection when cruising in heavy weather, ensuring safety and comfort for the passengers and crew. I cannot understate enough how vital these high bulwarks are on a boat that will be used to cross oceans, especially if you intend on going on far-flung trips with children. As we venture forward, next we come to the boat deck. The boat deck on this vessel is primarily dedicated as a technical space for tenders and toys, and it is not covered with teak like the rest of the decks. The boat deck is in the bow area, providing ample space for storing and handling watercraft and equipment. The 1500 kilogram crane makes light work of launching and recovering the Zodiac Pro 500 tender with its 60 horsepower Yamaha outboard engine and the Sea-Doo Spark jet ski. And thanks to the Portuguese bridge, launching and recovery operations can be carried out under the watchful eye of the captain or of the officer of the watch, ensuring that, once again, safety on board remains one of the top priorities when it comes to the operation of this luxury steel trawler yacht. Later in the video, we will check out the crew accommodation, which is located in the wow bag. But first, let's head up to the foredeck on the forecastle and taking the fantastic view. After ascending a ladder on the port side, we find ourselves on the forecastle, where the deck gear for the anchor is found. Note also the guard rails, which are on the port and starboard sides and extend aft. Up here, the layout is impressively efficient and uncomplicated. With ease, you can quickly access the deck gear necessary for managing the anchors. And wow, what a view. Before heading inside, I'm going to take you up to the flybridge. The flybridge on this boat features a full helm station, a bimini top and a seating area with a dining table. It's accessible via a staircase from the sky deck.
On the aft section of the flybridge, there is a forward facing seating area located in between the two stacks. Note also the high guard rails for added safety. The dry stack type of exhaust system eliminates the need for a water cooled exhaust, making it more efficient and less prone to corrosion. The dry stacks also help reduce noise and vibration, providing a more pleasant experience for those on board. The radar mast has two satellite communication domes and a Furuno radar. You could probably fit a CAI system up here as well, and for more information about that, click on the products listed underneath the video in my YouTube shop. And now let's head aft and check out the interior spaces before we have a look at the bridge and, of course, the engine room. As you enter the saloon from the aft deck, there is an L-shaped seating area to port with a table and some freestanding chairs. Moving forward to port is the entrance to the galley and here we have a huge mirror that also turns into a massive 65 inch Samsung TV. Surrounding the TV is plenty of storage space and the control units for the AV and entertainment systems. Thanks to the large windows, there is plenty of natural light in the saloon, but once the blinds have been turned, you have a cozy lounging area. Moving forward whilst keeping to starboard, we have a lobby area that leads out onto the main deck. On the port side is a staircase that leads up to the wheelhouse and a double cabin for VIP guests. There's also another staircase that leads down into the accommodation areas which we'll be checking out shortly. Forward this door leads into a day head. I really like this lobby area and I think it's a great way of inviting charter guests aboard this magnificent vessel. As we step into the galley via the port side of the saloon, we're immediately greeted by a spacious and well-equipped area designed to cater to every culinary need during your time on board. The layout of the galley is both practical and user-friendly, allowing for easy meal preparation and efficient service to the dining areas. This professional grade galley boasts top of the line appliances including a large refrigerator and freezer, an oven, a microwave, a dishwasher and a gas stove top with multiple burners. With these quality appliances you'll have everything you need to create delicious and satisfying meals for you and your guests. The ample storage space throughout the galley ensures that all the cookware, utensils and supplies needed are easily accessible and well organized. Additionally, the generous countertop area provides plenty of room for food preparation, making the cooking process a breeze. One of the standout features of this galley is the beautiful design, seamlessly blending form and function. Time to head up the staircase so that we can check out the wheelhouse and one of the VIP guest cabins. Here's the door that leads to that guest cabin, but we'll check that out in a moment. As we spin around and head forward, note the door that leads out onto the starboard side of the Portuguese bridge. The wheelhouse on the Inarche 86 is huge, and thanks to the massive windows, you get fantastic visibility all round. Starting with the helm station on the starboard side, we have the VHF radio. Moving over to ports, we have the digital display for the generators, as well as the controls for the twin engines. Note also the controls for the bow and stern thruster. Continuing to ports, we have the two multi-function displays for the Furuno radar and navigation, and I love this traditional destroyer ship's wheel. To ports of the helm station, we have this area here that could be used for traditional charts. Overhead atop the helm position, we have some more controls, and also the controls for the deck lights, as well as another radio. The large windows in this wheelhouse provide excellent visibility for the captain and crew and note also the blinds which can be lowered when the wheelhouse isn't in use.
There's a single helm chair which is perfect for those long voyages due to its comfort. Aft of the captain's chair is a raised seating area with a high-low table and this seating area can also be turned into a berth as and when needed. Over on the port side is the access out onto the Portuguese bridge but what do you think of this wheelhouse? Let me know in the comments below. Now let us head aft and check out the first of four guest cabins on this boat. This first guest stateroom, situated after the wheelhouse, has a double queen size bed, a sink, fridge and of course ample storage. Huge windows allow for lots of natural light. This cabin was actually added as a feature during the boat's refit in 2022. Although it does not have its own ensuite, it does have access to what could be its own private deck. As we gaze out of the door, you get a sense of the aft sun deck size. There's also a ladder that leads up onto the flybridge. Stepping out into this area, you can see there's lots of space for lounging around or laying in the sun. It's a great place to sit and relax as you take in the seascape as you motor along towards your next destination. The expansive side decks on both the port and starboard side lead out onto the Portuguese bridge. Note also the barbecue that located on the starboard side. While we are here, let's venture forward to truly appreciate the stunning views and convenient access provided by the impressive Portuguese bridge. The Portuguese bridge, a prominent feature on this vessel, is an essential element in providing safety and comfort while underway. Originating from the fishing boats of Portugal, this design element soon became popular among ocean-going vessels for its practicality and added protection. The Portuguese bridge wraps around the front of the wheelhouse, creating a safe walkway that allows you to easily traverse from one side of the boat to the other while maintaining a clear line of sight. This design is particularly useful when navigating in rough seas or when you need to access the forward deck quickly and safely. And now before we take a look inside the engine room, let's head below deck and check out the accommodation there. After descending the stairs from the lobby area, you enter the main accommodation areas aboard this Anarche 86. Moving forward, you pass through a utility area with a forward and aft door for extra privacy. The master stateroom is located forward and spans the full beam of the boat. It features a queen size bed. Over to starboard is a desk with a vanity area, a great place to escape and catch up on those emails. On the port side is a comfortable built-in settee. As we take a moment to appreciate the ambience of the master cabin, it's evident that the designers have put a great deal of thought into crafting an elegant and comfortable space. The gentle lighting creates a warm, inviting atmosphere, perfect for unwinding after a long day of adventure. Back over on the starboard side, we find the entrance to the walk-in hanging closet. In deference to the owner's privacy and as a gesture of courtesy, I won't be opening these doors as the owner has stored some personal belongings on board. Meanwhile, on the port side is the door that leads into the ensuite head with its granite shower. The attention to detail adds a touch of sophistication and luxury, ensuring that you'll feel pampered and well rested during your time on board. If you were to charter this boat in the Mediterranean, where would you want to take her and why? Let me know in the comments below.
Overall, this is an exceptionally large master stateroom with superb all-round storage for a vessel of this size. So as we spend time in this master cabin, be sure to take in these subtle nuances that make this space truly special, a testament to the skill and artistry of those who designed and built this magnificent vessel. Moving back aft on the starboard side, we find another guest cabin that has two single beds and, when needed, two Pullman berths. There is plenty of storage space in here, made up of hanging lockers and a number of drawers. As we continue to explore the starboard guest stateroom, it's worth noting the meticulous attention to detail that has been put into creating this comfortable and luxurious space. The stateroom boasts a soothing colour scheme and well-appointed furnishings, creating a relaxing and inviting atmosphere for guests to unwind after a long day of fun and adventure on the water. From the high quality linens and soft lighting to the thoughtful placement of power outlets and reading lights, it's evident that the needs and comfort of guests have been prioritised in the design of this cabin. The stateroom's clever use of space and storage options ensures that guests can keep their personal belongings organised and accessible during their stay. This cabin is further enhanced by its own ensuite, which features a shower equipped with a convenient bench. This thoughtful addition proves invaluable when taking a shower while navigating through rough seas, ensuring comfort and stability even in challenging conditions. So the next time you encounter a shower with a bench on a boat, you'll now understand the true purpose behind its thoughtful inclusion. The final cabin is this guest stateroom, located to port midships aft of the master stateroom. It has a queen size bed, an ensuite head with a granite shower, hanging lockers and plenty of drawer space. Other than the master cabin, which is your favourite cabin and why? Let me know in the comments below. Before we head down into the engine room, it is worth taking a quick look inside the crew quarters, which can be found in the wow bag. At the time of making this video, the skeleton winter crew aboard this boat are living ashore, so the crew area is being used for storage. As we venture into the engine room and machinery spaces, we'll find a meticulously organized and well-maintained area, showcasing the beating heart of this vessel's operations. The boat is powered by twin Caterpillar 3406 main engines, each producing 365 horsepower, which are A-rated, kill-cooled, and feature dry stacks. They only have 500 hours since their last rebuild, ensuring reliability and of course longevity. For ultimate comfort while underway, the boat is fitted with Nyad stabilizers model 304, which have been fully serviced in 2022. These state-of-the-art stabilizers greatly minimize roll, enhancing the overall experience for everyone on board. When it comes to water supply, the boat is equipped with a high capacity water maker, ensuring a consistent supply of fresh water for all your needs. This Explore yacht has a remarkable fuel capacity of 33,000 litres, providing an impressive range for extended voyages, but more about the boat's range in a second. Another noteworthy feature in the engine room is the fuel polishing system, for those who might not know, this innovative technology helps maintain the cleanliness and quality of the fuel, thus ensuring optimal engine performance and of course efficiency. Powering the yacht's electrical systems are two new sole diesel commercial grade 30 kilowatt generators installed in 2020. These robust generators provide reliable power to all the vessel's systems and amenities, guaranteeing a comfortable 
and enjoyable time on board. And let's take a second to talk about the headroom in this engine room. So just for scale, I'm six foot four and there still is, I would say about 12 inches headroom above me. Uh, this is one of the biggest engine rooms that I have seen on an Explorer yacht of this size. Uh, it is really, really impressive. And it's immaculate, it's so clean. In summary, this engine room and machinery space are a testament to the boat's quality and, of course, attention to detail, ensuring that every system and component is expertly designed, installed and maintained for the highest levels of performance, safety and, of course, comfort. But what do you think of this engine room? As ever, let me know in the comments below. And what about range? Well, she boasts an impressive range of over 6,000 nautical miles and astoundingly low fuel consumption at just 40 litres per hour. This vessel truly excels in efficiency. Remarkably, this includes the operation of both engines and a generator while maintaining a steady 1300 RPM and cruising at a comfortable 9 knots. After you've travelled your 6,000 nautical miles, you'll still be left with a fuel reserve of 10%. And as and when you need it, this boat has a top speed of a respectable 12 knots. At the time of making this video, the boat is listed for sale with classic charters for 3.1 million euros. If you're interested in finding out more, then I'll leave a link to their website in the video description. And if you've got access to a boat that you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then feel free to make contact with me. You'll find my contact details also in the video description. If you haven't already please make sure you subscribe because later on this week I'll be traveling over to Croatia to make a video about this custom 80 foot explorer yacht. If you'd like to stay up to date with me as I travel across over to Croatia then be sure to come and find me on Instagram. You'll find the link in the video description. As always I'd like to thank my channel members for supporting me as I grow my YouTube channel. We're developing quite a community. If you'd like to join my virtual crew from as little as just one pound or around one dollar a month, then click on the link pinned in the comments below. The videos recommended in front of you now are a couple of my videos, which YouTube thinks you will love, so please feel free to check them out. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.